I'm going to try and find some copyright free Pokemon music to put over this part, but if I can't do that, just sing the Pokemon theme song to yourselves. It's what I'm doing in my head. Hey everyone and welcome to Skein Spider. Today we are making a Pokeball which you can open and close. Now before we begin I just want to let you know that this pattern is going to be broken down into two parts. There's going to be part one which is today where we crochet all the pieces and then part two which will be out next week where we assemble everything. The reason I've chosen to break it down into two parts like this is because in the future I intend to do more Pokeball designs and rather than make the same assembly video over and over and over again, I'm just going to make the one and then redirect people back to that. So with that being said, let's get straight to our Pokeball pattern, grab your hooks and let's get started. To make this pattern, you're going to need a three millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and eight ply yarn in red, white, and black. You're also going to need something to close the Pokeball. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a button, some Velcro or a magnet to close the Pokeball. And the final thing you're going to need is a 120 millimeter bath bomb. Mine I purchased on Amazon, but you can also get them on eBay. Before we begin the pattern today, I just want to take a moment to go over some of the materials in a bit more detail, just because I think that's a necessary step in this pattern. So the first thing is your bath bomb mold. Now, as you can see here, I've marked one with B for bottom and one with T for top. Now, this isn't completely necessary with this bath bomb mold because both my pieces are the same height. The reason I'd done this is one of my test versions that I had was that the bottom piece was slightly taller, not very much by about uh, half a centimetre, if that, slightly taller than the top piece. So that's why I'd gone and marked them out, but then I realised, uh, okay, they're the same size, which actually makes things a little bit easier. So depending on where you get your bath bomb moulds, there may be a slight height difference. So just be aware of that. And when it comes time to actually crochet the pattern and put it together, I will be showing you how to get around that if that's the case for you. So that's the first thing I wanted to go over. So make sure that you have labeled your bath bomb mold halves so you know which is which. Second thing we're going to go over is about the closure. So if you're not planning to make a closure for your Pokeball at all, you can skip this part. But if you are, you have the couple of options that I mentioned in the materials section. The first is a button. Now when it comes to the button, the exact size doesn't matter too much, but you don't want it small. I'd recommend the smaller size, probably about a centimeter and a half to two centimeters. And you don't want it any bigger than the centerpiece that we're going to be making. So it's a, probably a bit hard to judge at the moment exactly what size to use. But again, when we get to that section of the video, I will be going over this in a little bit more detail. So that's one of the options you have for closing is a button. The second option that you have for closing is some Velcro. So you only need a couple of bits of that that we will sew onto either side of the Pokeball to join them together. So that's pretty straightforward. And the third option I've used as closing is some magnets. Now these can be a little bit trickier. I actually like this closing method the best, but it can be a little bit difficult because you need to get magnets that are A, the right size, but B, strong enough to go through. If I grab my pieces here, they need to be strong enough that, oh, I don't want them sticking to the Velcro, that they need to be able to stick together through two layers of crochet. So these ones I found are an ideal size, but unfortunately I can't tell you where I got them from because I scrounged them up from the garage. So I have no idea where they came from originally, but if you want to do the magnet method, just keep that in mind. They need to be small enough that they won't be bulky on your Pokeball, but strong enough to go through the two layers of crochet. Depending on exactly which closure method you choose, the assembly is going to be slightly different. So in the assembly video, I will be showing you how to do each of the different closures. They're not drastically different. They're not too difficult. They're just a little bit different from each other. So for this video, if you would like to follow along with this, I am going to be using the button, but I will be again showing you how to do both the magnet closure and the Velcro closure as well. And I think that was all I needed to go over for this portion of the video. So let's dive straight into the pattern. To create the casing for our Pokeball, we're going to be crocheting four pieces. We're going to be crocheting an outer shell for both the bottom and the top and an inner piece as well for both the bottom and the top. 
So they roughly follow the same pattern. So we're going to be increasing out the same amount. Where they begin to differ a little bit is in the height of the Pokeball. But if you need to adjust the pattern, I will be showing you how to do that later on. For now, we're just going to do the basic pattern. And then again, later on, we will do any adjusting as necessary. We're going to begin with our red yarn. So we're making the outer shell for the top piece. And we will also be needing our black yarn at a later stage. So just have that handy. We're going to begin with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases and an increase is just two single crochet in each stitch of the previous round. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round four starts off with one single crochet. And then after this single crochet, we're going to do an increase in the next stitch. Increase. And then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times. When you finish that fifth increase, there should now be one stitch left in your round and we're just going to place a single crochet into that. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six begins with two single crochet and then we're going to do one increase. After that, repeat four single crochet, one increase five times and then finish off the round with two single crochet. Round seven is five single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round eight starts with three single crochet and then an increase. And after that, we're going to do six single crochet, one increase repeated five times and finish off the round with three single crochet. Round nine is seven single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round 10 is four single crochet and an increase followed by eight single crochet, one increase repeated five times. And then we're going to finish with four single crochet. Round 11 is a nine single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round 12 is five single crochet and an increase, and then repeat 10 single crochet, one increase five times, and then finish off with five single crochet. Round 13 is 11 single crochet, one increase done six times. Round 14 begins with a six single crochet and then an increase. And then we're going to repeat 12 single crochet, one increase five times, and then just finish off round 14 with six single crochet.
Round 14 is our last increase round. So at the end of that, there should now be 84 stitches in your round. And rounds 15 through to 18 are just going to be 84 single crochet each. Round 19 is also going to be 84 single crochet. However, this time we're working in the front loops only. So if you think of each individual stitch as a little V shape, little V, the part closest to you, so this part of the stitch here, that's the front loop. Those are where we're going to be working for round 19. And we're going to do 84 single crochet in the front loops only. For round 20, we're going back to working in both loops. However, before we do that, just make sure that you can see the exposed back loops from round 19, because we're going to be working into those later. So if you don't have those, that's going to cause a problem. So if you can see this ring here of the back loops, you can continue on to round 20. However, if you can't, you'll need to go into frog your last round and then redo round 19 in the front loops only, so you can see that ring. So round 20, is going to be 84 single crochet and we're back to working in both loops. When you've finished round 20, just secure your end for the moment. So take out your hook and add a stitch marker. From this point, we're going to be working in rows instead of rounds because we're going to start creating the shape for the Pokeball. And to do that, what we're going to do is count out from the last stitch, so stitch 84 of round 20, and you're going to count out eight stitches. And then in the eighth stitch, you're going to place another stitch marker. Now this step isn't completely necessary, I just like to do it to give myself a visual aid. And then what we're going to do is insert our hook back in and then we're going to single crochet all the way around until we hit the stitch before the stitch marker we've just placed so that should be 76 single crochet that we work and that will leave us with eight free stitches When you've done that 76th single crochet, we can now take out this stitch mark. We don't need that anymore. And just double check that you do have eight free stitches here. Six, seven, and eight. And then what we're going to do is grab our scissors and we're going to cut a short tail. Now this doesn't need to be too long. It just needs to be long enough that we'll be able to weave it into the backs of the stitches later on. And then to start row 22, we're going to take our hook and insert it into stitch number two for from row 21. So number one is still marked with a stitch marker. So we're going to insert our hook into the one next to that. Bring in your red yarn and then just line that up behind the stitch. You're going to yarn over with that and pull through. And then just to join, we're going to do a slip stitch. Now this slip stitch isn't going to count as a stitch, we're just using it to join. To begin row 22, go into that same stitch, so the second one where we just slip stitched, and then single crochet. So this is stitch number one of row 22. Row 22 is going to be 74 single crochet in total. So that means we're skipping the first stitch and we're also not going to work the last stitch, so stitch 76 from row 21. You're going to single crochet all the way around from stitch number two here, single crochet all the way around until you get to the second last stitch and that's where we're going to stop. So that is 74 single crochet in total. I am also going to be working over this end here to secure it so I don't have to worry about weaving these ends in later. And 74. 
Once you've done that 74th single crochet, you should have the one left. And we're just going to finish off like we did for row 21. You're just going to cut a tail, pull up with your hook, and then to start off row 23, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to insert our hook into the second stitch from row 22. So there's one, I've inserted my hook into two. We're going to rejoin our yarn, line it up, pull it through, slip stitch, and then single crochet back into that same stitch. And this time we're going to do 72 single crochets. So starting in the second stitch in the row, single crochet 72 around, and that should leave you again with the very last stitch of the previous round free. And 72, and again, you should have one free stitch left. Leave that unworked. We're going to cut a tail and pull up with our hooks. Now rows 24, yeah, 24 through to 27 are each going to be 72 single crochet. And we're going to do them in the same way that we've done the last three, except we're going to be starting in the first stitch and working to the last stitch. So to start row 24, I'm just going to insert my hook back into stitch number one. Join it the same way that we've done previously. And then I'm just going to single crochet from the first stitch all the way to the last stitch. And then I'm going to cut a tail and then begin the next row and so on until I've reached the end of round 27. When we're finished round 27, we are just going to... Oh, <laughs> we're just going to secure our end because we're going to take a moment to weave in all these ends. Now, if you would like to, for or in round 28, or what I'm going to be calling round 28, it's not quite a full round, we're just finishing off this part here, but for the sake of the written pattern, I am going to be referring to it as round 28 but you can work over these ends as we crochet along, but I don't like to do that because there's so many of them. It tends to make the stitches, if you do crochet over them, very bulky. So this side, the stitches will be sticking out here a little bit, and then this side will be, you know, the nice, neat stitches that you normally have. So what I'm going to be doing is weaving these ends into the back of the stitches here. So for that, you're going to need to grab your needle And then I'm going to take the top, I'll start at the top and work my way down. And then when that's threaded, all we're going to do is push our needle through the backs of the stitches like this. So that means that when you flip your work over, so I've gone through the back of the stitches here, and when I flip my work over, you can't actually see the needle from the front. So we're going to continue that. I tend to do about five or six stitches in one direction. And then when I've done that, so I'll pull this yarn through. Everything's a bit of a mess at the moment. All right, so I've pulled that all the way through and then I'm going to go back in the opposite direction. This just helps it to stay nice and secure. And I'm going back in the opposite direction for roughly the same amount of stitches. And then when that's done, I'm just going to cut the excess yarn and I'm going to repeat the process for all of my tail ends, so all of these ends. And these ends over here that I already worked over when I did the start of my rounds, I'm just going to snip those off. So go ahead and finish off those tail ends and then we will come back and complete round 28. Alrighty, when all the ends are weaved in, we're going to reinsert our hooks. And then we're going to crochet what I'm calling row 28. I think I said round before, but I meant row. And all that's going to be is to single crochet down this side, 
single crochet across the original eight stitches that we left free and then single crochet back up the other side. So we have six rows extending out from here. So it should be six, eight and six. And then once you get to the end, we're just going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the last row that we did, like so. And then you want to leave a long tail for sewing. So give yourself plenty of yarn to work with. And then we're going to pull up. If you have a clip or a bobby pin, something like that on hand, grab that because you're going to fold up and then clip or pin your yarn end just so it's out of the way. So I'm just going to clip mine to the side of the pokeball here. It just makes it a little bit easier to do this next part. If I can actually clip it down, there we go. And then we're going to go back to those exposed back loops from round 19. And to make it a little bit easier to work with, just fold the top down so you can see them more clearly. And for this next part, you'll want to bring in your black yarn. So you're going to grab your hook and you're going to insert it into one of the back loops from round 19. Now, which stitch exactly you go into, it doesn't matter, but I like to have it at the back of my work. So the where we've created this, this shape here, that's the front. So I like to insert my hook at the back. And then we're going to grab our black yarn, line it up behind our chosen stitch, yarn over and pull through that back loop. And then we're going to slip stitch to join. And this slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch. So we're going to go back into that same back loop, yarn over, pull through and single crochet. This is where our stitch marker is going to go because this becomes stitch number one of round 19 in the black. And then we're just going to continue crocheting in the black entirely into the back loops. So you can go all the way around and that will give us 84 single crochet in total. I'm also going to be working over this end so I don't have to weave it in. I'm just going to pause for a moment because I forgot to mention something earlier. When you first join and then begin crocheting your black rounds, make sure that you're crocheting in the same direction that you did the red stitches. So that means the right sides of your stitches will be on the same side for both pieces. Because if you crochet in the opposite direction, the wrong sides of your black stitches are going to be facing outwards. So we want the right sides for both the red stitches and the black stitches to be facing the same way. So just make sure you're crocheting in the right direction with your black stitches. For rounds 20 through to 28 of the black, we're just going to be doing 84 single crochet each. And this time, or for those rounds, we're going to be back to working in both loops. When you're finished around 28, just secure your end because when we get to the assembly stage, what I'm going to be doing is showing you two ways to attach the inner and outer part of the balls together. So we have the outer shell here and then when we crochet the inner shell we're going to sit that inside and then this one I'm going to leave the yarn attached to my skein because I'm going to single crochet together however I'm also going to show you another method which is to cut the yarn so this black yarn here and then crochet them together by joining the yarn and then crocheting the two pieces together so you will end up with the same result but I'm just showing you two different ways that you can approach it what we're going to do now that the top is finished is crochet a second piece in white and that's going to be for the bottom so you're going to use the exact same pattern as we did for the top you're going to crochet the first part in white and then you're going to join the black yarn and then crochet those rounds so that is the top and the bottom taken care of but then you're going to crochet the inner shells now the inner shells do use the same pattern so from rounds 1 through to 14 you're going to do the increase rounds again and then from rounds 15 to 24, you're just going to do 84 single crochet for each. So again, we're using the same pattern to crochet all of the pieces. 
What may be different for you though is the height that you need to crochet out to. So as I've said, I've crocheted to rounds 24 for my inner shells and with the black, the black yarn, I've crocheted out to rounds 28 on those pieces. For me, that is the equivalent of, if I just bring in one of my shells here, of the very last round sitting just above the edge of my shell here. So 24 rounds in total gets that height for me. And the same with the, the outer shell. So I place that in here. And this is a little bit of a tight fit, but that's what we want. But when it's all pressed flat, the top or the last row, I should say, sits about one round up from the edge of my shell. So what you need to do, depending on your you know, tension hook size, because not all three millimeter hooks are made equal, all that sort of stuff, you may need to either add an additional round of 84 single crochet, or you may need to reduce it. So for instance, in the inner shells, you may need to crochet to round 23 rather than to round 24 like I've done. The increasing rounds are going to remain the same. We're going to do that to round 14. It's just that the additional rounds of 84 single crochet on top of that may change for you. So I would recommend that when you finish crocheting your piece, don't cut the yarn just yet. Grab your shell, line it up, see how it looks. If it's either too big or too small, either add or reduce the total number of rounds that you need to do. To finish off this video, we're going to be crocheting the centerpieces. Now the centerpieces come in two sizes, the large, which is this size, and the small. You're going to need to make two large sizes and just one of the small ones. So we're going to start off with the large, and we begin with six single crochet in a magic circle. And once again, we're using our three millimeter hook. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet and one increase repeated six times. Round four begins with one single crochet and then an increase. And then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times and finish off the round with one single crochet. And round five, which is our final round is three single crochet or one increase repeated six times. When you've finished round five, just slip stitch to finish off and you're going to cut a short tail. This just needs to be long enough that we can weave the end in. It doesn't need to be long enough for sewing. And with that, we're going to go on to crochet the small piece and we're going to be using the same pattern, except we're only going to be crocheting rounds one through three of the large pattern. So that is round one is six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases and round three is just one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. When you've finished round three, what you can do at this point is if you'd like, add a ring of black stitches using slip stitches for 18 slip stitches all the way around. However, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to slip stitch to finish off and then leave a tail for sewing. If you do end up doing the black stitches or the black slip stitches, you will need to leave a tail in the black for sewing as well. And with the small piece crocheted, that is all our crocheting finished. Next week, we're going to be doing the assembly of our Pokeball. So I hope you'll join me for that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, consider doing so. And I will be back next week with part two.